Ugh. Don't you just hate when you have a fly stuck in your house? Drives me nuts. Today, we're going to talk about the skeletons of insects. Ugh. So, lesson seven, let's jump in. Our learning intention for today, we are learning to explain scientific concepts in a text so we can better understand informational text. Because here's the thing, informational or nonfiction text can be really challenging to understand at times, especially when it's new information. Okay, so we really want to look at like, how can we understand these scientific concepts like skeletons and bugs? Okay, so that way when you're coming to these texts, you know how to tackle them and really get down to the bottom of them and they don't have to be so overwhelming like they can be sometimes. So we know we're successful when we can identify text features and then use those text features to determine that what concepts are being presented. Okay, so today we're really going to focus on like thinking about these scientific concepts based on text features. So remember, text features are things like pictures, diagrams, graphs, charts, tables, maps. Okay, so we're going to be using some of those to help us understand what the author is talking about. So our foundational skill for the day is antonyms. Ant, ugh, I see that word ant in there. Wouldn't use a fly swatter to get them, but ants also. Ugh. Can you tell I'm not a bug person? Hmm. So antonyms, antonyms are words that have opposite meanings, okay? So the opposite. So for example, we have the words sensible and foolish, okay? And you're going, oh, those are, let's talk about what those words mean because they're antonyms. So the word sensible means having good sense, like, you know, that makes sense. That was a good decision. Foolish is having no sense, the opposite, right? So, oh, that was a sensible choice to spend $20 on, you know, a new pair of shoes. You really needed that. Foolish would be, oh, maybe that was kind of foolish to spend $500 on that pair of shoes, right? I mean, I love shoes. Shoes are my favorite, but I don't generally spend $500 on my shoes because that's just, I can't spend that much on it. That for me, that would be foolish because I don't make enough money to be able to do that. Okay, so I have to be a little bit more sensible and spend a little less money on my shoes. So here we go. Alan, let's look at Alan. Alan is sensible with his money, but Stuart is foolish with his. So maybe Stuart's buying a lot of shoes. I mean, shoes are good, guys. Like I say, I love shoes, but you know, you got to think about what's your wants and your needs. Do you want it or you just need it? So maybe Alan's focusing more on things he needs and Stuart's just getting the things he wants. Oh, I don't know. All right. So an activity that you can work on on your own by either pausing the video or working on it independently it, um, later is to circle the antonym for the underlined word. So I will go ahead and read these sentences for you so you are familiar with them when you're doing this on your own. The opening to the cave was narrow. It was not wide enough for a person to go through. Okay, so somewhere within those sentences, there's an antonym for the word narrow. The next one, three students are absent from class, but the rest are here. The last one, the teacher likes to see students busy at work. She does not like the students to sit idle. Okay, so you have to figure out the antonym for the word idle. All right, and then one other page that you can work on on your own is listing an antonym or the opposite for each word. And again, I will just read these words for you real quick so you're familiar. So we have the word cowardly. It makes me think of the Wizard of Oz and the Cowardly Lion. So there's a hint for the, the meaning of that word for you. Disappear. Sturdy. Focused. Disappointed. So you will want to come up with an antonym. That's the opposite of each of those words vocabulary for today we ha first have the word segments so it means each of the parts into which something is or may be divided okay or like separated so i actually have this is an example diagram of a spider's leg okay and you'll understand more later but this spider's leg has different segments one two three four five six 
seven segments, each are made up of different little parts or pieces. Armor is our next vocabulary word. It's the protective layer or shell of some animals and plants. Okay, so here, I had the little dog, I believe that's wishbone, in the suit of armor. Okay, because back in medieval times, they wore a suit of armor to protect themselves. So let's go ahead and we will get reading. So arachnid and insect skeletons. Ugh, insects. You may call them all bugs, but spiders and scorpions aren't insects. They are part of a group of animals called arachnids. Arachnids have two part bodies and eight walking legs. Insects, like ladybugs, have bodies with three main parts and six walking legs. Both insects and arachnids have exoskeletons. The outer covering of their bodies and legs is hard. It protects the soft inner parts of their bodies. So let's see, it says the spider's body and its eight legs are protected by its exoskeleton. Ugh. That's a cross spider. And then we have a ladybug here and it says it has the delicate wing and then a hard wing case here. So that's what we like, what we see. And you're like, oh, a ladybug. Ladybugs are kind of cute, but still they, they can stay away from me. Some arachnids exoskeletons are fierce weapon systems. For example, a scorpion's tail has sections that act like joints. When the scorpion holds its prey with its pincers, its tail curls up and delivers a deadly sting. Another type of arachnid, called a tarantula, might look soft and furry, but it still has an exoskeleton. The hard covering over each leg is divided into seven segments, or parts. This makes the tarantula flexible. There we go, segments, parts, okay? And again, it happened I worked to work out that I was able to find a picture of the seven segments of a spider's leg. So if you're really into spiders, you could even memorize or learn all the parts of their leg. Fun fact of the day. And it says, as a tarantula grows, it molts or sheds its exoskeleton from time to time. So then we have the tarantula's exoskeleton over here. Ugh. And then we have a diagram of the desert scorpion with its jointed tail its venom stinger, its jaw, walking leg, and pincer. Insects such as beetles are protected by a tough waterproof exoskeleton. Adult beetles have more of this armor than any kind of insect. Some even have pointed spikes and horns. All beetles have hard wing cases that cover their wings. They have to open these wing cases to fly. And again, so they, it says they had this kind of armor. So remember, armor is that outer covering that really protects them. Okay. So then we have a little diagram here. It says a beetle takes flight. So let's see. Number one, the beetle is about to fly into the air. Okay. We can kind of see him. Number two, the beetle grips the plant while the hard wing case, cases begin to open. So now we can see these cases are starting to open a bit. Number three, the hard wing cases spread out and thin and the thin hind wings open and begin to move so now we have more wings that are opening and moving and number number four the beetle glides into the air so now he's able to fly ooh. guys all these this bug talk is making me ooh. and then the growth of a damselfly ooh, there's that fly not your regular house fly though a damselfly looks a little different as we'll see Young insects change in size and shape as they grow up. Some kinds of young insects, such as young damselflies, dragonflies, and grasshoppers, change shape or gradually change shape gradually each time they molt or shed their exoskeleton. Young insects like these are known as nymphs. This change in shape is called metamorphosis. So it says first, number one, the nymph rests on a stem. Number two, the nymph grows and the skin splits. Okay. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell. And then number three, the nymph is now an adult. It breaks free of the exoskeleton. So now I can kind of see where it's breaking out of that exoskeleton. So our stop and think question is actually going to go on to the next page. But it says, how is an adult damselfly different than a nymph? So we're going to read the next page before we answer this. But I want you thinking about it. Number four, the wings grow longer and expand as the damselfly moves farther up the stem. 
Number five, two hours later, the adult is now at its full length and can fly. And number six, a few days later, the adult damselfly is fully developed. Okay, so how is an adult damselfly different than from a nymph? Well, let's look at this adult. He's very long, he's got wings, right? And just these little tiny legs. Now look at the nymph. How's he different? You tell me. Right, did you say that the nymph doesn't have wings? You're right. The nymph doesn't have wings and it's, it looks like to me, I could be wrong, but it looks like he's got like longer legs almost. Okay, so the nymph isn't flying and now we have this much longer, bigger damselfly with big, long wings. So when we're explaining scientific concepts, we really want to be able to use text evidence and the um, text features. So looking back at this page, we had this diagram of the beetle, okay, and how it begins to take flight. So remember it said that the insects such as beetles are protected by a tough waterproof exoskeleton. Adult beetles have more of this armor than any other kind of insect. Some even have pointed spikes and horns. All beetles also have hard wing cases that cover their wings. They have to open these wing cases to fly. And then we have this diagram that's showing how they open their wing cases. So let's compare the text features and the concept that they are explaining. So for example, we had a diagram here, right here. This is what we would consider a diagram. Okay, so we have a diagram on the page. Let me click back. We also have photographs. Okay, so pictures of beetles as they are moving through each of these steps. And then captions on each of the photographs. So we're gonna call each of these little, the one, two, three, and four captions. So they're explaining what is happening in each of those pictures. And all together, they're forming their own diagram. So this diagram is really made up of a couple um, individual text features with the captions and the photographs, okay? So what concept are they showing? We kind of talked about this a little bit already. They're showing how beetles open their wing cases to fly. So right now we can see how we are able to use that text feature, okay, to be able to understand how beetles open their wing cases to fly. So if I am a reader reading this, it says all, as we said, all beetles have to hard, hard wing cases that cover their wings. They have to open these wing cases to fly. I have this whole diagram here with the pictures and the captions to support my understanding of what that means for the beetles to open their wing cases to be able to fly. Okay, so we'll get through that. So your reading response today is to do your own little graphic organizer. Okay, so you're gonna base it on page 26, which looks like this, okay? And I want you to list the text features and the scientific concept they describe. So we're talking about, again, the text features. I'm seeing pictures and diagrams on here. Okay, and then talk about what are they actually describing? What is the reason for this? So you're gonna need to read the text a little bit as well. Okay, so reading the text and then thinking about what are these pictures and diagrams really showing us? What part of like science, okay? So our scientific concept before, was how beetles open their wing cases. So you don't make it too complicated, but do your best on that. You should at the very least get those features written down and then do your best on that concept, okay? Good luck, do your best, and I will see you all next time. Adios.